How's it going? Charles Botenston here from Botenston Properties International. I actually just filmed a perfect market update and guess what happened? I forgot to press record. So this is the second market update. However, it's actually going to be a better market update because we'll just say that that, that was my test run. So we have essentially my opinion, which is collecting the data, hearing actual buyers and sellers, and then matching it up with the data that I'm going to be talking about right now, which uh, kind of is a little bit gloomy. However, remember, these numbers have been compiled from weeks ago. Okay, this is not live. This is from a month of compiling data, data that has already occurred. I am in the marketplace. And why am I saying that? Because last Sunday, literally for three months, we were seeing no one coming to our open houses. And in this last Sunday, we had six. Then at another place, we had seven. And I said, wow, this is kind of what I've been saying is that there's going to be a time where all this inventory is just exiting the marketplace, 30 homes a day, 35 homes a day, 40 homes a day, just literally a day leaving the marketplace. And then there's going to be a time where there's going to be a crunch. That's the supply, the demand. There has been such a built up demand that I said, there, there's going to be buyers that said, you know what? I've been out at the, at Montauk. I've been up in the Hudson Valley. I've been at the Jersey Shore, or I had all these weddings. I had all these vacations. I had, I had all this time off. And now I want to buy. I want to enter the marketplace. Okay. So I'll be talking about both people, sellers and buyers at the end and actually what to do. So let's go over the numbers. Number one is Manhattan. Manhattan has been down for a while. Manhattan this month is down 4% year over year. Last month it was down 5% year over year. Month before that 4%. That's a lot. Okay, so if you compound that, and by the way, it hasn't been up in probably about five or six months, so it's been slowly going down. 4%, 5%, that's a lot, okay? By the way, those are closed sales, okay? So that's not even where it's supposed to be listed at. And then we're not even talking about the amount of homes that are coming off the marketplace because they didn't sell at all. Moving on, the amount of new homes. This is very interesting. It is up 11%. I thought that number would be a lot lower. Why would I think this should be a lot lower? Because if you're an owner and you're seeing all these homes sell at a price that you don't want to achieve, in other words, lower than what you want to achieve, you're not going to want to put your home on the market. But guess what we're seeing? People put their home on the market. So that kind of doesn't make sense. Days on the marketplace, this is very interesting. This is something that is kind of really not that good. 77 days on the market year over year. So in other words, I'm sorry, 77 days on the market before, I think it was 62. So it is up significantly. In other words, last month it was 62, 77, this time around. I would say that's very close, probably about 90 would be 95, 100 days is recession level. Okay, that, 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 that means three months before it actually is in contract and then eventually sells. Okay, that's a lot. Manhattan has essentially been that one borough that nobody has really been going after. Okay, so the numbers pretty much reflect that. Brooklyn, however, Brooklyn and Queens are always the, the sister brother that has been propping them up. However, Brooklyn is down 1%. Last month it was flat. So the sales year over year, it was flat last month, and now it's down 1%. This is why it's down. You had a lot of Manhattan buyers that said, you know what, I'm not looking to buy, so I'm gonna stay in my rental. By the way, rentals are skyrocketing. So if you own an investment property, keep that investment property, don't sell it. However, they've been looking in Brooklyn because the pricing and the inventory has been going up all over the borough of Brooklyn. This is the thing. New homes on the market in Brooklyn is up 17%, the most in months. That's a lot. That's a lot of homes. How many is that new development? I couldn't tell you because this is all homes. This is condos, co-ops, new developments, conversions, all of that. Days on the market, this is very surprising. 72 days on the market. So essentially you have Manhattan at 77 days on the market on average, Brooklyn at 72, which is a lot, and the sales price is down 1% in Brooklyn. In Manhattan, it's down 4%. So Manhattan is obviously looking very good for buyers. Brooklyn, it's so-so, okay? Let's talk about Queens. Queens has been exploding the last couple of months. You've had all of these buildings that finally came online propping up the sales price. Sales price was up 10%, 9%, 8%. But the problem was that was all inflated by new conversions and new developments. If you take the Long Island Railroad and you just look north out of your window, you'll just say, wow, it kind of looks like Miami. 
the amount of buildings, the amount of cranes that are just, just rose out of the ground like a mushroom overnight, essentially now you're looking at a flat sales price. Year over year, it's flat. That's shocking. That is shocking, okay? I, I thought I would never see it. However, the amount of new homes come on, coming on the market is not as high, okay? So the amount of new homes, it used to be 25% uh, year over year new homes, 28%, which is crazy. Imagine one fourth more homes coming on the market, yet the demand isn't there. Guess what happens to pricing? It's flat. That's what we're seeing in Queens. Days on the market, 69 days. You have 69 days in Queens. Brooklyn, you have 72 and then 77 in Manhattan. Those numbers are high. The amount of homes that are coming on the market, they are also high. And that's why the pricing is reflected that way. However, this is the way that you take this data and you translate it to current real life. Number one, if you're a buyer. Yes, you need to be working with a professional. And the reason being is that you have a choice of your homes, okay? Whatever home you want, you could say, I'm looking down the block. I'm looking within my building. I don't even need to buy. That's all negotiating tactics especially when you're seeing 17% new more homes, 18% more homes, and in Manhattan, 11%. Imagine Manhattan having 11% more homes on the market than last year, and last year was a lot, okay? Guess where pricing is gonna go? Because the amount of demand is not there. A lot of people took the summers off. I already talked about, so this Sunday, with the amount of people that have come to our open houses, which was shockingly high, it was like seven, and then another one, it was six, Meanwhile, for weeks, we were only having one or zero or maybe two. And we're like, yay, two people came to our open house. And then you have seven. So guess what that means? That means there is a pent up demand of the amount of buyers. We have picked up two buyers, two brand new qualified buyers this week, okay? That doesn't sound like a lot. However, in one week, when you're getting these buyers, actually, there could be a third, but he might be buying the house that he's already living in as a renter, so we don't really count him as that. But if he doesn't buy it, then he'll work with us. And he was kind of working on negotiating tactics and everything else, which you should definitely email us and say, listen, you know, I know you're not gonna get paid, but you're the professional, let me know if this is a good price that I'm about to buy a townhouse worth $1.6 million, $1.7 million. So this is the thing, if you are a buyer, if you, it's all on the purchase. Everything is made on the purchase. If you overpay on the purchase, that's not good. Why? Because then on the back end, when you sell it, you either make a significant amount of profit or you make no profit or you even lose money, okay? You don't wanna be in that circumstance. So it's all made on the purchase. You need a professional, competent person who's willing to work for you in your corner, ask boldly for your terms and for your price. If you're a seller, you have a lot of homes that are coming on the market. You're gonna have a lot of competition. It has to be valuable. It has to go up. It's not at the pricing that you want. It's at the pricing that the market is willing to pay. So this is my advice to sellers. My advice to sellers is say, if you don't wanna rent it out, and you don't wanna stay there. You have to go on the market, and you can only go on once, you have to go at the right price. Otherwise, if you go on at the wrong price, it's gonna sit, and guess what? All of your neighbors are gonna sell. All the other one bedroom, or three bedroom, or townhouse comparables are gonna sell. And then you're left with your home at Thanksgiving, which nothing happens, and then at Christmas, where it just goes like this to New Year's, and then everyone says what they say in the beginning of the year or the beginning of the summer, they always say, I'll wait. And at the end of every year, every buyer says, I'll wait. You don't wanna be in that. You do not wanna be in that position. And this is the last piece of advice I'm obviously gonna always give. I was there in 2016 when the election was going on. I was there in 2012 when the election was going on. Nothing happens. The amount of transactions, the amount of activity that goes on is way down. So if you're a seller, you need to sell this fall. You could only do it once. It has to be done properly. It is not the price that you want it to trade at. It has to be comparably priced where you say, this is exactly, not an exactable, this is exactly like mine without the size or maybe the layout's a little bit different. So I'm gonna go at that price or whatever it's in contract for or whatever it's sold for. 
Okay, it's not like the buyers are gonna come in and negotiate 10% off. If you actually put it up correctly, it's gonna sell within one to 2% of your asking price. And that, my friends, is lucky. Or I would say that's skill, but that's lucky because there's a lot of owners that were with, wish they were in your position of getting any offers. So if you guys have any questions, obviously leave in the comments below. I'm always available, charles at boatonston.com. If I'm getting paid for it or I'm not getting paid for it, it's not a big deal. I just wanna be your real estate resource. So we're here to give you professional advice, whether it's now or in the future. Charles at boatonston.com. Have an amazing day.